Good. Next, what we can do is we compute the interest on this particular loan. The interest will always be based on the last month's balance, whatever the ba balance is. And as you know, in an amortization schedule, the balance will decline over time. So it will be equal to the prior month's ending balance, which is the outstanding loan amount, times interest for one month. So let's do that. It's going to be equals the prior month's ending balance times, and I'm going to put a left parenthesis to make sure this math is accomplished first in the order of precedence, the interest rate, the annual rate, but since I only want one month's worth of interest, I have to divide by 12. Now the question before you go and finish this formula is if I were to copy this formula down to row 360, am I going to have any problems? Okay, E19. If I were to copy this down one row, it would then refer to E20. Do I want that to happen? Yes, I do, because it needs to refer to the balance of the prior month. So this purely relative reference is fine to be copied down. Now the annual interest rate, as you notice, when I name a range like this, the default is to make it an absolute reference. So this annual interest rate will always be referring to cell C12. And you can go up and look at formulas again. Let's, let's do that just so you know uh, what we've done. Under Name Manager, Annual Interest Rate. And if you see that, that it says we're on Sheet 1. The, the cell that we're referring to is on Sheet 1. And that exclamation mark is just part of the coding. The dollar says the C is fixed and the dollar says the 12 is fixed. So the annual interest rate will always refer to cell C12. No matter where you copy that uh, word, annual interest rate, it will always refer to cell C12. Therefore, if I go back to C20, we feel confident now that this formula has been modified so that it can be copied down and it will be correct for all rows involved. The principle is the amount that the loan should be reduced because the payment exceeded the required interest rate. So if you hit equals, take the payment, minus the portion that relates to interest, you get the principal reduction. I'm going to hit F2. And now we ask ourselves, if I were to copy this formula down, will it be appropriate for all other cells? If I were to copy this down, then it would be equals B21 minus B21. B C, sorry, it will be equals B21 minus C21. And it copies down B22 minus C22. Is that what we, want, what we want to have happen? The answer is yes, because I want that formula to refer to the payment and the interest on its particular row. Next, we can go over to balance. I'm going to hit equals the prior month's balance minus the principal reduction. By doing that, what that tells me is I started with the $70,000 loan. I made a payment of $397.45. $320.83 of that was interest. Therefore, the excess was a principal reduction which took us from 70000 down to 69923 Now here's the nice part. Since we've already numbered these down to 360, and since we feel that all these formulas are properly purely relative or purely absolute or mixed relative absolute, we feel that these, this row of formulas is now correct. We can take this row, highlight it, so you click cell B20, hold the shift button down, you can go end right arrow key, and that highlights that whole row. And now here's the nice part. Move your cursor over the bottom right where those crosshairs appear and just double click. And what it's just done is it's copied it all the way down to the bottom of where you've already labeled these rows. So I'm going to click on cell E20 and then go end down. And what that shows you at the very bottom that this loan has become fully amortized. So it works. It seems like our formulas are working properly. Now I'm going to go end up to put me back to the top. And now here's the miracle of uh, Excel. What if the person says, well, actually, uh, I just had a big inheritance, and therefore I think I can afford a home that's a little bit more expensive, and I'm going to um, buy a home that's $500,000. So they can change that up in the home price, and you see that all this information then changed. The challenge in this particular case, which is good that this came up, is that these values are now too large. And that's why it becomes pound, pound, pound. So a quick way to fix that would be to go up here 
E between E and F, and you see that double arrow appears, and you just double click, and it uh, does an auto fit of the column so it's properly uh, sized. Before we spend too much time formatting, let's make sure that all of our uh, values here have been properly formatted to be a currency. So I'm going to click on cell B19, hold the shift button down, go to E19, and then go end down. Do it one more time, end down, and you see I've selected the whole range. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the home button and I'm going to make these all um, dollar, let's say. So it's under accounting. Uh, the type of uh, formatting number is accounting, and I choose dollar. And so it looks like uh, this now works. So I'm going to go to E19 and down, and you see it's zero. Looks like that's all nicely formatted. And so let's go back and maybe change this home price to be. Uh, $750,000, and you see everything updates, the down payment updates, the loan amount updates, uh, monthly payment, everything all updates.